math students, this is going to be your second lesson in our unit one, which is going to cover uh, how to add and subtract integers. At this point, you guys know what adding and subtracting is, but as you're reading this, you might be asking yourself, like, what are integers? Do I remember? Do I know what they look like? This is going to be where we start the lesson is what, what we're talking about when we say we're going to add and subtract integers. So the first thing we've got for you is the definition. Definition of integers is the set of positive and negative numbers. So when we talk about adding and subtracting integers, what we're really talking about is what you do when you have to add or subtract a negative number. When you think about numbers, usually you know people start off by counting like one, two, three, four. But that's not actually where numbers start. Numbers go forever in both directions. You can have all these negative numbers too. Um, so we've got the number line here just to show you what we mean when we're talking about the set of integers. We're talking about all these numbers and, and beyond. Um, the other word you're gonna hear me say a lot in this lesson besides integer is sign. Uh, sign is the word you use to describe if something is positive or negative. So I could say the sign of all these numbers is positive and the sign of all these numbers is negative. So those are the two, the two main words in this lesson, integers and signs. Before we go into the math, talking about more integers, I just want you to pause first and ask yourself, where have you seen negative numbers before? Obviously in math class, but where have you seen them in real life outside of school? Go ahead and try that now. Uh, I've been doing this for a while, so the, the two main suggestions I usually hear students say, uh, the first one is I see negative numbers with temperature. One of the first things I noticed when I moved here from Florida is here in Indiana, you definitely can see negative numbers with temperature here. Uh, when you're talking about temperature, if you kind of think of this as like a sideways thermometer, Right, the temperature doesn't stop at zero, it can keep going into the negatives. And that just means it's, it's getting even colder. Uh, the other place uh, you can see negatives in real life that I also often hear from students is if you are unlucky with money, right? Again, if this is like your bank account, you could have $4 in your bank account, you could have $0 in your bank account. Bank accounts can also be negative if your bank account is negative, that means it's money you owe. It's money you don't have. Um, and so like I said, if you're unlucky with money, you might have seen that before. These are the two main answers I hear. You might have another uh, idea on your paper of a place you've seen negative numbers, then it could be correct. Uh, but like I said, these are the ones I hear the most, and these are the ones when we start getting into some word problems with integers. Uh, these are what a lot of our word problems are going to be about. Uh, so this is some of the vocabulary and just to get you thinking about negatives. One of the first things we're going to do in this lesson, just to help us familiarize ourselves more with integers, is this idea of comparing them. When I say comparing, I mean like which one's more, which one's less. Um, and when you compare numbers, we usually use something called an inequality. Inequalities are going to be statements that compare two unequal amounts. So it's called an inequality because it's unequal, unequal. Um, now yesterday we were talking a lot about equations. An equation could be something like 2 plus 2 equals 4. Equations use equal signs to show that they're, the two sides are equal, that they're the same. If you're talking about an inequality and in something that is unequal, we can't use an equal sign because they're unequal. So instead there's two symbols we use when we're talking about inequalities. The first one means less than, and that symbol looks like this. The other symbol means greater than, and that symbol looks like this. So for example, I could say something like two is less than four. I could say something like five is greater than three. You're always reading them from left to right. So one of the first things we want you to do to get familiar with using these inequality signs is these two questions right here. 
the first question is asking you what inequality sign goes in this box. Go ahead and try that one now. Hopefully you said the less than sign. Uh, we would want to say negative 2 is less than 5. Negative numbers are always going to be less, less than a positive number. The second question is, do you have more money in your bank? Sorry, do you have more money if your bank account says negative $1 or if it says negative $100? You can go ahead and answer that question, but also write something like this, write an inequality using the numbers in that problem. Go ahead and try that now. Uh, we had talked about earlier how negative numbers, when you're talking about money, means that's money you owe. This is saying you owe one dollar. This is saying you owe a hundred dollars. I know I personally would rather just owe one dollar because negative one is greater than negative a hundred. If I owe one dollar, I'm closer to actually having money than if I owed a hundred dollars. You think about it on a number line too. It's like zeros here. Negative one would be next. Negative 100 is way down here. So it's closer to the positive. It's closer to having money. Now sometimes what I just wrote can confuse students because we know with positive numbers that one is less than 100. So sometimes it's a little weird for students to see negative one is greater than negative 100. Uh, it's always helpful to kind of go back to that number line I had just drawn, um, but it's also good to know that with negatives, it might be backwards from what you're thinking if you think about positive numbers. Now, the way you could think about it is like translating it to temperature. Negative one degrees is warmer, it's a higher temperature than negative 100 degrees. Hopefully, we never see this in a DNA. Uh, so this is what we've got for comparing integers. Now that we're a little more familiar with integers, we can get into the actual objective of this lesson, which is adding and subtracting integers. So when we talk about how to add and subtract integers, there's two ways you can think about it. The first way is using a number line. I really like the number line because I, I'm a visual person. I like seeing what's happening with the numbers. So if you feel the same way, this could be a way that really helps you. Um, now I've got the first problem down here, something you guys already know. You already know 3 plus 4 is 7. But what you might not know is to how you can show that or prove that on a number line. If I wanted to show you why 3 plus 4 is 7, I could start at 3 on my number line and then show on the number line myself adding 4. When you add something, it's getting bigger. It's going to go towards the larger numbers. I'm gonna put a little plus sign here just to remind me if I'm adding, I'm gonna go this way. So I'm starting at three, and if I wanna show myself adding four, I would just count four this direction. I would count one, two, three, four, and that shows me why the answer is seven. Now again, I said, I know you guys know what three plus four is. You probably wouldn't need to use a number line to do that, but knowing how to use a number line could help you for a problem like this with a negative number. So in that problem, we've got negative three. That's where I would start. And then we're adding one. So just like before I'm adding, I'm going this direction. I'm going towards the larger numbers, the positive numbers. If I want to add one, all I have to do is count one. I'm gonna count one. And that shows me my answer is negative two. Now I'm gonna pause here and say one more time. The reason I like this number line is it shows you why something is the answer. One of the most common mistakes students make with this is they see a plus sign, so they're trying to add that three and one together. That plus sign is just telling you you're counting this direction. It's telling your answer is gonna be in this direction, which helps you see why the answer has a two in it instead of a four. We continue with our number line examples. This next one, seven minus two. Again, I know you guys know the answer is five, but similar, similarly to this one here, how could you show that on a number line? Well, just like the, the first two, I'm gonna start at the first number. I'm gonna start at seven. And if I wanna subtract two, subtracting something makes it smaller, I wanna to go towards the smaller numbers. I wanna to go towards the negative. I'm gonna put a minus sign there just to remind myself if I'm subtracting, I wanna come this way. Well, how much do I wanna subtract? I wanna subtract two. 
So I would count backwards this way. One, two, and that shows me where the answer is five. Now again, I know you guys know that, but it can help you for a problem like this, which could be a little trickier, like two minus five. Now at some point in your life, you might have had a teacher, friend, family member tell you two minus five, you can't do that. If you have two, how are you gonna take away five from it? You can't. You actually can, it just means it's gonna be negative, right? If you have $2 in your bank account and your bank wants $5, they're doing it whether you can or not. It's just gonna go into the negatives. So if I'm doing this with our number line, I wanna start at two. I wanna subtract five, I wanna count backwards five. One, two, three, four, five. And I can see what our answer is. I can see it is negative three. So those are four examples of how you can use a number line to help you with these problems. Go ahead and try this last one now. All right, how did you do? We wanna start at negative one. And I want to subtract four, which means I wanna go this way four, because we're subtracting. I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, and I stop at negative five. That would be our final answer. Go ahead and try some more practice problems now. All right, so I said there's two ways you can think about these problems. One way is using a number line like this. And I said I like a number line because you can see what's happening. The problem with a number line is I could give you a problem like this. And please, please, please do not try doing something like this on a number line, right? Our number line is limited with what we can do with it. I wouldn't want to use it for large numbers. You could also have like decimals or fractions that you can't see on the number line. So it's good to give you an idea of what's going on with the numbers, but it might not be the way you wanna do every single problem. So the second way we have to do these is using integer rules. There's two rules we're gonna use. The first one says if numbers have the same sign, you can add the two numbers and keep the sign. An example of a problem that uses this rule, if we go back to the ones you already did, could be something like this. If I'm looking at this problem, those numbers have the same sign. They both have this minus sign or negative sign in front of it, so they're the same. If I add one and four, it gives me five. And then if I keep the sign, because it was negative here, negative here, I keep negative and we get negative five, which is the same thing we got before with our number line. So that is one of our integer rules. The other integer rule says if numbers have different signs, we want to subtract. If the signs are different, you want to subtract and you want to keep the sign of the larger number. So an example of a problem we just did that would use that rule could be this problem right here. We've got negative three plus one. When I look at it, I notice the signs are different. Different signs means you want to subtract those numbers and then keep the sign of the larger number. Three is larger than one, so I would want to keep the sign of three. Since three is negative, I would make my two negative. And we get negative two, same answer you had before from the number line. So some students like the integer rules because you can use it for anything big or small numbers, decimals, fractions. Um, so instead of using a number line this time, let's talk about these next problems with the rules. You can always go back to a number line to kind of help you make sense of it, uh, but I'll give you examples of what it looks like if you're using rules instead. So for example, here we've got two minus 11. The first thing I would ask myself is, do these numbers have same or different signs? Well, the two is positive, positive, there's nothing in front of it. And then the 11 is negative, so they are different. Different signs means we want to subtract. So if I subtract these numbers, it gives me nine. It's a little tiny nine. Gives me nine. And then the second part of that rule, subtract and keep the sign of the larger number. 11 is larger, 
it has that minus sign in front of it, so we're going to call it negative. So since 11 is negative and it's larger, my answer would be negative. If you're thinking about the number line, what's really happening here is we're starting at 2 and we're going backwards 11. So we're going back into the negative numbers and we would end up at that negative 9 there. Uh, continuing with the examples, that next one, negative 4 minus 20. Negative 4 minus 20, let's see. Looking at them, I notice the signs are the same. And same means we want to add the numbers. So I could go ahead and add those and get 24. And then if I look at my larger number, it's negative. So I would keep it negative. Because the signs are the same, it's just going to stay negative. So we get negative 24. Again, if you're trying to picture what this would look like on a, a number line, um, we're starting here at negative 4, which would be over here on this side. And we're going backwards 20. So I'm going over this way 20. I'm counting 20, which is why we're getting an even bigger negative number. Notice when I'm doing this, I'm not having to write out every number. I'm just kind of picturing what's happening to help me say, oh yeah, so it makes sense that it's a larger negative. This next one here, why don't you go ahead and try? Well, look at this problem. This is something you already knew how to do before I started confusing you with negative numbers. 21 minus 6, 21 minus 6 is 15. We put that in there because sometimes students start forgetting the stuff they already know when you start seeing negative numbers. Don't forget there are some like these easy problems that are similar to what you were doing yesterday. If you have 21, you're taking away 6, it's going to give you 15. Uh, what about this next one? The first question I would ask myself is, are the signs same or different? Okay. They're different. What does that mean I need to do? Subtract. So I'm going to subtract these numbers. That leaves me with 11. Should my answer be positive or negative? Positive. Nice. Why would it be positive? Well, it would be positive because our larger number is positive. That 16 is positive, so our answer would be positive. If you're thinking about it on a number line, put zero in the middle. Negative 5 is over here on that negative side. If you are counting up 16, it's taking you into that positive area, which is also why it would be positive. One last one. Go ahead, try this one for me. Okay. Well, the signs are the same, so we want to add. If I add 91 and 8, that gives me 99. And then I want to keep the sign of the larger number. Our larger number is negative, so I would keep it negative. So these are the examples. Go ahead and try these last two problems. Okay, so these are our integer rules. I want to show you a couple other things that you might see. So the first thing is, sometimes with negative numbers, you'll see parentheses around the negative number. This right here is not any different than what we were just looking at. This is the same thing as negative four plus three. I would read both of these out loud the same exact way. Some of the reason you might see negative numbers is just because you might have noticed our negative sign and our minus sign look the same. So it's just kind of a way to show that this is negative four. It's not, I'm not gonna read it as minus four. Another reason might be something like this. If you've got two signs next to each other like that, it's kind of a way to separate them, to say plus negative two instead of plus minus two. Um, but as far as the math goes, it's the same idea as before. If I were looking at something like this, I would ask myself, same or different signs? Well, they're different. So I would want to subtract just like before. And then, also just like before, I'm looking to see the sign of the larger number. It's negative, so my answer would be negative. I'll try one more one. Looking at this one, what do you think the answer is? Well, here the signs are the same. Both the 5 and the 2 are negative. Same sign means we want to add. And because they're negative, I want to keep negative. I'm keeping the sign of the larger number. So keeping the sign of both those numbers because they're both negative. Another trick students can use to do these problems or kind of help confirm your answer is correct is change these into like a real world situation you're more familiar with. 
So an example some students like to use is money. If you wanted to make this a word problem in your head to help you figure out the answer, think of negatives as money you owe and positive as money you have. So let's say I owe you $4 and I have $3, well, what would I do? Well, I would give you the $3 and then say, hey, I still owe you a dollar. Because I still owe you money, it's negative, and then I owe you one dollar. Something like this could be, like, I owe you five dollars, I owe you another two dollars, so now I owe you a total of seven dollars. So this helps some students kind of just think about it in terms of real world situations. If this is something you're interested in and you want a little more practice with it, reach out to us, we will be happy to help. There is one last example we're going to look at and it has to do with problems that look like this here. So in this problem we are subtracting a negative. This is different than what we had in those previous problems. In the previous ones it was just only adding a negative. But here if you are subtracting a negative, subtracting a negative is the same thing as adding. What I mean by that is if you see I'm subtracting a negative 3, that is the same thing as adding 3. So one way you can do that is by changing both of these negative signs into one big plus sign. That's the way I like to use it. You're using both of those negatives. Or you can go in and say, I'm changing both of those negative signs into plus signs. Either way, it ends up changing the problem from 4 minus negative 3 into just four plus three. Four plus three is pretty easy for us to answer, right? Four plus three is seven. If you wanted to think about this one in terms of like real life stuff, the best example I have is it's like taking away a debt. So this is like saying you have four dollars and maybe you owed me three, but I'm saying, ah, don't worry about it. Instead of you having to pay me $3, I'm taking away that debt. Well, if you don't have to pay someone $3 anymore, that's $3 you now have, and so that it works out to be seven. It's like taking away a debt. It's the best example I've got. Um, so to practice with this last rule, we've got these last two problems. Looking at this first one, we've got two minus negative seven. My advice for these problems where you are subtracting a negative number is always rewrite the problem. It can be really helpful instead of looking at this with all these minus signs in it, to say instead, well, I know minus a negative is the same thing as adding. So I'm gonna come in and say, this is the same thing as two plus this at the end of the day is just a lot easier to look at than two minus negative seven. We could go ahead and finish up by saying two plus seven is nine. Same thing over here. Go ahead and try this one. Well, when you go to rewrite it, we've got minus a negative. That is where our plus sign is going. But this negative 54 is gonna stay the same. It's just now negative 54 plus eight. Remember, both of those minus signs are changing to addition sign. Now, once we've done that, this is much nicer to look at than negative 54 minus negative eight, but we do need to use what we were talking about at the beginning of this lesson with uh, having negatives and positives. These signs are different, so I would want to subtract. We subtract 54 and eight. I'm gonna have to borrow from the five and change my four to a 14. 14 minus eight gives me six, and then I've still got that four there. So we get our answer, 46. Now one of the mistakes I see students make when you, you get distracted by doing all this math by hand, is don't forget to check the sign. What sign do we need on this answer? Well, I wanna keep the sign of that larger number, which is negative, so my answer would be negative, negative 46. That is the end of this lesson. The one thing I'm gonna say about negative numbers is it's something I see a lot of students struggle with at the beginning. I promise this is something that you get more and more practice on it and you will become more and more confident. 
At the end of the day, negative numbers are half of the numbers we have in math. Remember, half the numbers are positive, the other half are negative. So they're not going away. They're going to definitely be in your future for future math classes. So we, we start this off at the beginning of the class to make sure you've got lots of time and opportunities to practice this so that by the time you're ready for the next class, you can feel more confident on it. Remember, you're always free to reach out to us if you need extra practice on anything, or if after going through this lesson, you feel like you're still struggling on this, we are here to help and support you in any way we can. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.